Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back after the short break. You're watching Towards the Origin in discussion with Sheikh Qadi Lutfur Rahman. Our today's topic, Miraj, the fastest trip. Uh, before the break, we were discussing about the importance of the month at Rajab, Sha'ban, and Ramadan and the dua that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made specifically, specifically in the month of Rajab. And our Sheikh was also defining the meaning of the terminology which is Al-Isra and Al-Miraj. Now, Sheikh, you did touch upon the definition of Isra al-Mi'raj. Before I move on to the actual story, I just wanted to find out something here. At what point in Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life did this Isra al-Mi'raj take place? Okay. Now, um, the, the event of al-Isra al-Mi'raj, it took place at the early stage of Islam. And you can uh, imagine the uh, incredible amount of tension that was going on in Mecca al-Mukarramah due to the preaching of the Prophet Sallallahu Da'wah ila Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the people of Mecca, they couldn't accept the fact that Muhammad Sallallahu he was chosen as, 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 a, as, a, as a prophet and he was a preacher. Um, so he, he faced a lot of challenges, lots of difficulties in Mecca al-Mukarramah. Um, and this was also before the migration, before the Hijrah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi So we can easily imagine and understand the difficult um, conditions of, of Islam or, or the Mus of the Muslims um, at that stage um, before the uh, event of Al-Isra Al-Mi'raj. Um, also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, at that time, he uh, lost two significant people yes. um, in, 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 uh, in his, um, two significant people of his, of his family. Uh, one, uh, uh, Abu, Abu, uh, Abu Talib, his uh, beloved uncle Abu Talib, he lost Abu Talib, Abu Talib passed away. And also his beloved wife, Sayyida Khadija radiallahu anha, Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu anha, also died just before that. And uh, Sayyida Khadija radiallahu anha, she wasn't only a wife uh, of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but also she was a friend, she was a partner, she was um, a companion. She was someone who inspired in many different ways, economical growth and advancement of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. So she was more than a wife. And just to add a little bit with what you have just said is, uh, Khadija radiallahu anha was the emotional support that means of Absolutely Rasulullah correct. sallallahu alaihi wasallam even during the time of wahi the first wahi. revelation indeed a loyal wife and emotional support and the other hand the other hand his uncle was the protector protector yes the physical yeah. protection yes. so there is yes. an emotional support from the wife yes. and the physical protection from and the and he uncle. lost his these two important the people. two pillars two pillars yeah and after the demise of these two important people and while he he was facing a lot of challenges, difficulties, uh, persecution, um, um, you know, uh, marginalization uh, on Islam, uh, the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he decided to entertain the Prophet that, sallallahu alayhi wa Does it mean he was at his lowest point in life, um, emotionally? Uh, he, he was obviously down and, and uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa of course he was guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wouldn't be like one of us, yeah. but, but Yes, he was. In terms of challenges yes, he faced. in terms of challenges. Mm. So Allah the Almighty, he decided to entertain and, uh, and present one, reward. Of the, one of the greatest gift, and that is a meeting, arranging a meeting with himself. So Directly. arranging a meeting with the master of the universe, Allah wa ta'ala. So the Holy Prophet Muhammad was honored, and you see, in al usri yusra, the ease come after difficulties in the ma'al usri yusra. So it's a lesson from here that we can take, and if I have to relate it in today's mm -hmm. life, that mm -hmm. after every hardship, after every trial and Indeed, tribulation, definitely. the reward is greater. As long as sabr is there, patience is there, the reward is definitely there today or tomorrow. Uh, it has to be there. In the ma'al usri yusra. So Allah the Almighty, he decided to host his beloved servant, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu which shows the greatness and the highness of this individual, uh, the, the most influential man in the history of humanity, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he was invited by Allah the Almighty to be his guest um, in the seventh sky. Now let's just get into the story itself. Um, Allah the Almighty, he said in Surah Al-Isra, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير 
Subhanallahi, the glory be to Allah. Allah is pure, free from all kind of errors and mistakes. He is the most pure and he is the glorified. Subhan Allahi asra bi abdihi. Subhanallah, glory be to Allah is the one who took his beloved slave. Asra bi abdihi. Again, we said Al Isra is a travel during the night. So he took his slave for a journey by night from Masjid al Haram in the Holy Land of Mecca al Mukarramah to the furthest mosque, Masjid al Aqsa al Mubarak, located in, in, in Medina al Quds, in the city of Al Quds, currently known as Jerusalem. May Allah free Masjid al Aqsa al Mubarak. I mean. Now, the furthest mosque in Jerusalem. Um, لنوري أسرع بعبد ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله and we made the surrounding of Masjid al-Aqsa blessed uh, the the vegetation the plantation the food the fruits and not only the materialistic means, but also this land was blessed by many, many prophets. Many prophets were sent down to the land of Palestine, to the land of Al-Quds, to the land of Al-Aqsa, Al-Mubarak. So therefore, Masjid Al-Aqsa was our first Qibla. Uh, we, we all, many of us, we know our first Qibla, we used to direct towards Masjid Al-Aqsa and we used to pray. And it is considered as the third holy site in Islam. First is Masjid al-Haram in Mecca, the second is Masjid al-Nabawi uh, Masjid al in Medina al-Munawwara, mm. the third one Masjid al-Aqsa in, in the holy land of Al-Quds um, in uh, Palestine uh, and currently known as Jerusalem. And uh, just to add there a bit, I think, is, is it not the only mosque that all the prophets that were sent on the face of the earth were put together and prayed together? In congregation. Exactly. I'm coming to the story. So, yeah. so that will entail, inshallah. Now, um, so uh, Allah wa ta'ala, he took his slave. And why he mentioned slave? Yeah, he could say his Rasul, he could say Nabi. his Khalil. He could mention other words. But he may, he mentioned slave because the Prophet ﷺ, he managed to prove himself to be the best slave. And the respect and honor of a Muslim in the slavery for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ubudiyya lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. So... He was taken there and in order to min ayatina, in order to show my proofs and signs min ayatina, innahu huwa samiul basir. Allah is all hearer and all seer. He can see everything and he can listen and he can hears every, he can hear everything. Now Prophet Sallallahu was in Mecca in his house. Some said in, he was in, in, in another house, uh, uh, but uh, some said that he was in his own house and he was asleep. Suddenly someone tapped uh, he, someone uh, started to tap on his feet and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam opened his eye his eyes he couldn't see anybody second time tapping again he opened his eyes he couldn't see anyone then he see Sayyidina Jibreel I mean Alayhi Salatu Wasallam is there <coughs> in front of himself in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he presented he um, he just arrived in the house of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with a, a vehicle known as Al Buraq hmm. now what is al-buraq? Buraq is an animal which is in between mule and donkey. So it's not a mule uh, and it's not a donkey. Um, it's, it's something in between them two. So it's not directly Bain comparable. Wal, wal, uh, wal himar. So is it, it's not directly comparable to, to any animal that yes, is there yes, at the moment. Yes. Um, but so uh, al-buraq was, was taken by the by angel Jibreel, I mean, alayhi salatu the leader of all, of, of all malaika, of, of all angels. And the Holy Prophet ﷺ was instructed to mount on the Buraq. So Prophet ﷺ, he mounted on Al-Buraq and he was taken instantly to Masjid Al-Aqsa Al-Mubarak. When he arrived in Masjid Al-Aqsa Al-Mubarak, he was offered, obviously this is the hospitality of Malaika, the hospitality of Allah the Almighty. He was offered two drinks, milk, a cup of milk and a cup of alcohol, wine. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he chose the milk mm -hmm. and he rejected the alcohol. At that point, Jibreel Amin Alayhi Salatu Salam said, اخترت الفطرة. Oh Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have chosen the fitra. You have chosen the nature. 
because the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he understood Sallallahu that, um, and he could, he could imagine the alcohol and wine. It was although permissible at the early stage of Islam, but due to the incredible amount of social problems and harms for the society and human beings, it was prohibited in Islam. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, chosen, he chose uh, the milk and he drank the milk. Then he was given the chance and honor <coughs> to be an imam in Masjid al-Aqsa. And Imam for whom? Imam for the prophets. And prophets such as Ibrahim alayhi salam, the Anbiya. Musa alayhi salam, Isa, the Ulul Azmi min al-Rusul, some of the major prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They all were there in Masjid al-Aqsa. So Prophet Sallallahu was an Imam and he led the Salah. Um, and that shows also the virtues and the marriage of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was also the Sayyid al mursaleen the leader of all the Anbiya. Um, just to clarify, Prophet what Sayyid. sort of salah was that? Was it a nafal salah? Um, I, as far as I uh, understand, I know it was more like an optional salah. Optional salah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because I haven't seen anywhere it said that it was a specific um, waqt or a specific time mm -hmm. for salah, dhuhr or asr, nothing like that. Uh, but also the salah, actually it was, it was commanded when he was ascended. Mm. So salah wasn't fard in that case because the, the, the farai, the, the compulsory prayers came after that. Yeah. So after he led Salah, then his journey of Mi'raj starts. So before that it was Isra. He, from travel from Mecca to Jerusalem in Masjid al-Aqsa is Isra. And then now the journey of, of Mi'raj, which is the ascension of the Holy Prophet وسلم, to the seventh sky via all the skies. And he reached to the highest sky where he met Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala in the Sidratul Muntaha next to a tree called the Sidr tree, um, the, the Lot tree, uh, the tree of Sidr. And that is on the right hand side of Arsh and Jannatul Ma'wa and next to it the Jannah, the heaven, and the Sidratul Muntaha, and the Jannatul Ma'wa, as mentioned in Surah An Najm. Now, um, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu he met Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He was a guest of the Lord of the Universe. And you can imagine this honor, this, uh, this respect, this highness uh, um, of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one of the most important pillars of Islam was prescribed and commanded during that time. So this is a feature of Al-Mi'raj. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Holy Prophet to pray 50 times a day. Indeed. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was happy. We indeed find it difficult to pray 50 even times five a day. times. Now imagine if 50 times, when just barzu did namaz for oito, 50 times salah was still there, then it would be just coming, going to the masjid and coming out of the masjid, going to the masjid and by the time we get back home, the salah time again, we wouldn't be able to do anything. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a prophet, he was happy with the 50 salah came back, he was coming down, as he was coming down, he knocked on the door of all the prophets in, on, in every, each sky, he met major prophets. And when he came to Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam said, what, what, what did you do, what happened? What, what kind of discussion took place between you place, yeah. and your Lord? So he said, I was commanded 50 prayers. A day. A day. Mm. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu said, go back, quickly go back. Your ummah won't be able to do that because he, he experienced his, his qawm, he experienced his people. So he said like, you know, your ummah won't be able to cope this 50 salah. So go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and request him to reduce and, and, and deduct the salah. So he went back, then he was taken down, he was reduced down to the half of it. And then it's, some says 45 or some said like it was, it was even reduced. And then he came back and he said like, has he been reduced? He said, yes. He said, no, still not enough. Go back and reduce. So he went, he, he went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and came back and forth until it was reduced down to five daily prayers. Now, I had a quick question there. Mm. What, if that was the case, inshallah, um, we know that Allah has the knowledge of ghayb there. Mm -hmm. So why was it not straight away given five instead of ascending it in order, descending um, it in order? Obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he, he gave, and he does certain things like that. Sometimes we don't know the hikmah. Hik okay. And, and uh, perhaps, um, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he gave 50 salah, maybe he would have made it easy for us as well. Because but when he orders something and he commands something, he makes it easy as well. But Musa alayhi salam, out of his kindness and compassion, 
and mercy for, uh, for, for us as an ummah and we have to make dua for Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Otherwise we would be just going to salah. We'd be praying the whole day. We can't even pray five daily prayers. Uh, Subhanallah. We find it difficult. Some people find it difficult and they neglect the salah. Yes. The I remember one of the completely. scholars, um, uh, Imam Siraj Haji said um, that he was leading Salat al-Eid um, in one uh, place and he said, the Imam said, whoever didn't pray Salat al-Fajr, please stand up and pray your Salat al-Fajr. And he said like, I didn't want to look back. But out of his shock, he said, like, I, I just had to look back. And I said, about 70% people are praying Salat al-Fajr. That shows the amount of people don't pray the Salawat. Unfortunately, this is the reality. Now, another important aspect mm -hmm. I need to touch mm -hmm. from there. Mm -hmm. um, it is the only act of ibadah that was given directly in the personal from meeting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a personal meeting to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We know unlike all the ibadah, all the sharia was done through Jibra'il alayhi salatu wa salam. But this is the only act of ibadah. Does not this signify the importance of uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, maintaining the salah absolutely. in a disciplined salah, manner? Salah is, is, is non-negotiable. Uh, salah is, is even uh, the Prophet said in the hadith the bayn al kufri wal iman as salah the, the difference between iman and, and kufr is salah itself so uh, some of the scholars although they're minority they consider if someone misses salah deliberately can go out of Islam which is not May the Allah opinion of the majority of the, of the scholars uh, yes salah is important of course there are numerous verses in the salah and then one of the most important pillars of Islam so just quickly going back to the story so he then came back and then he returned to the holy land of Mecca again and some suggest that when he returned to Mecca al-Mukarramah he still found his blanket still warm mm. so that quickly and when we said the topic was the fastest journey, why? Because it is the fastest journey and it is the miraculous journey. Some of the people may not uh, believe or may not, uh, will find difficult to trust if they don't have the strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and that happened in Mecca. And it's said at a time when science and technology wasn't advanced like today. Exactly. Today, if someone tells us we have been to a different planet, mm. still we believe it. Imagine if it was told 200 years ago or 400 yes, years yes, ago. Yes, yes, yes. No, that's, that's true, yeah. Uh, now, when Prophet Sallallahu returned to Mecca al mukarramah next day he, wake, he woke up uh, and he started to share the, the, the story there. The journey. The amazing journey that took mm. place there. <coughs> the journey of Al-Isra and Mi'raj. As he was um, uh, relating the story, the people of Mecca, they started to take mick as usual, as the nature, they um, denied and they belied Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam crazy, he went, he went, he became mad. And you know, they said, like, how can that happen? Like, imagine like, you know, where it's is Masjid Al-Aqsa and where is Mecca? I mean, if there is lack of Iman, sometimes it could be, it's something beyond the imagination even. Mm -hmm. Because if, uh, during those days, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. it used to take a month to make that journey. Journey to, to, to that and kind of first place. In the first place, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has, is saying that it has done it in one night. Unfortunately, nowadays, many of us as Muslims, we have more faith in science than Absolutely. actually Wahi itself. That's true. Um, I remember like um, my father used to say that when he used to go travel to back home Bangladesh, um, he used to say that you can put the card in and he can take the money out. <laughs> and he used to share that story to one of his uncles in back home. And he said, oh, you must be joking. There has to be someone, someone behind, behind sitting. This. <laughs> <laughs> and he's the one who's giving you, you can't see him. You're joking. So he, he, he rejected. So you see, with the advancement of technology, people started to believe. See, people start, because people have faith in, in what they see. But some of those things, like if we said, in the past, like for example, you can talk to somebody over the phone, a mobile phone. No, 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 not past. And you Just can in see. distance past in 10 years, 15 years ago, that you would be able to see someone away in the other part of the Atlantic. Exactly. People wouldn't believe that. Wouldn't believe that. Believe that. But with the, with the advancement of technology, people started to believe in things. But imagine like this thing, it's not impossible uh, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do you think Islam has spread all over the world? Um, you know, some of the people that traveled, even the people like Shah Jalal rahmatullahi, when he arrived in, in, in Bangladesh in Bel Bengal, how th these people are powerful. Allah helped them. With the help of Allah subhanahu exactly. wa ta'ala. Exactly, with the help yeah. of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course. And does not Allah say in the glorious Quran, kun fayakun? Kun, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make anything happen. So he related the story, people started to take me as usual, as the nature, and they rejected, they denied, and they belied Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
But Sayyidina Abu Bakr عنه, he was told by some of the peoples of Mecca, they said, Oh Abu Bakr, have you heard your prophet? He started to say that apparently he went to uh, Masjid al-Aqsa, Jerusalem, he went to Al-Quds in Palestine. And then um, returned uh, back in the and, same and, night. And do you think it's, it's right? Do you, do you know, are you okay with that? Uh, um, Sayyidina Abu Bakr عنه, said, he was Al-Ameen, Al-Sadiq Al-Wa'ad Al-Ameen, before even he became prophet. You people of Mecca used to accept him as, as a truthful, as a trustworthy individual before he became prophet. So if Prophet Sallallahu said something that he can <coughs> never lie, ما كذب, now come to the Surah Al-Najm, ما كذب الفؤاد ما رأى, his heart never lies. ما كذب الفؤاد ما, he would never say, he would never make a story. And before they say, وما ينطق عن الهوى, he never speaks out of his desire. He never said anything from himself. So, مَا كَذَبَ الْفُؤَادُ مَا رَأَى He never lies. His heart never lies. His heart is purified. قَلْبْ السَّلِيمُ مَا كَذَبَ الْفُؤَادُ مَا رَأَى أَفَتُمَارُونَهُ عَلَى مَا يَرَى Would you, or people of Mecca, dispute with the Holy Prophet about the incident of Al-Mi'raj? Would you dispute? Would you say that, you know, he didn't go? And would you have a doubts in him, as, as you normally do? Uh, you know, هُمْ فِي مُخْتَلِفُونَ ما كذب الفؤاد أفتمارونه على ما يرى ولا قد رآه نزلة أخرى. He saw Angel Jibril عليه الصلاة والسلام for the second time. ولا قد رآه نزلة أخرى عند سدرة المنتهى at the place of منتهى سدرة المنتهى the tree of a cedar the low tree around uh, in on the seventh sky or on the, or the seventh sky around Jannah. عند سدرة المنتهى عندها جنة المأوى. So Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم can never lie. He would um, he would never make a story. Uh, but it is indeed was an amazing, miraculous, historical event that took place in the history of Islam. And it is the fastest journey that ever took place in the history of humanity. That we probably couldn't find any other story that happened as equivalent as the um, incident of Al Isra wal Mi'raj. Now, just to also highlight it when you said the incident that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Siddiq, uh, I mean, he was given that title at that moment when he believed what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Now, if we can relate it to our today's life, when we are constantly being bombarded with doubts, with shubuhat, shubuhat is. whether it be press, whether it, mm. yeah, whether it be the press, whether it be the politicians, whether it be people of no faith or other faith, constantly we see on TV screens that Islam is being mocked, is being maligned, is being humiliated. Center of attention. A center of attention. Focus of, uh, and it perhaps might create some doubts if people, if a person does not have a proper understanding of Islam, might create a doubt in his heart and might even abandon. And we know some of the stories that people have abandoned their faith, fortunately. I, now, I, yes. I just wanted to relate it to those time, to our time. Even at the time of calamity, Abu Bakr Sadiq maintained his Iman. Mm -hmm. So should it not be in our today's yes. age and time when we are constantly being faced by the trials and tribulation, we should stick firm in our faith yes, and belief? Yes, yes. Uh, Abu Bakr Sadiq, why was he titled as Sadiq? Because he said Sadaq, he, he trusted the Prophet وسلم, instantly without any kind of any delay, any, 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 um, uh, any, any uh, delay. So he in, uh, trusted the, the Holy Prophet Now, um, yes, uh, today, as you have mentioned, Islam has become a, a center, center of attention. Of attention. Mm -hmm. um, uh, people of the world are busy, occupied, talking about Islam. But I normally strongly believe that um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرَ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ That they, they plan and Allah the Almighty, He also plans but Allah is the best of the planners. I know that many of us Muslims, we have da'af al-Iman, the weakness of faith, the weakness of himma, you know, the courage, the himmat that we say, we, we, our himma has gone really weak. The we strength. Do not, we do not feel proud, we do not feel honored to be a Muslim because of the situation that the Muslim Ummah and we have discussed all in over previous the previous episodes as well yes, about this we, we discussed issue. about them B uh, but uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the, the best plans for us we need to remain steadfast al-istiqama is very important we see even Muslim many of us today sometimes we're good Muslims other time we leave our religion sometimes we or, or just to give you an example some people say it's a time of very uh, trials out there challenging time yes. do not wear hijab do not sport people, beard cut your beard trim your beard off we have people when they see the power they, they, they're inspired and yeah. when they, they see the weakness they just they lose their, their their faith they lose their iman but the Prophet he faced the 
the most tough, the difficult time, the toughest time, but yet he remains steadfast. Sahaba remains steadfast. And therefore they were granted the reward when they traveled to Medina al-Munawwara. They were given the authority. They, they established a, a state in Medina al-Munawwara. So they were given the rewards after the difficulties. Now we cannot lose our, our, our hope. We cannot lose our courage. We have to remain strong. We have to have the himma. And we, although have Muslims are becoming maybe weak in some ways. Some Muslims, not all obviously, but we have got people coming to Islam. Don't forget that. Yes, the Islam, Islam is, is the fastest increasing growing religion, religion in the world. Yes. And we, we, we are very happy that people of the people who have fair mind, people who think independently, people are uh, people who have the fairness, al insaf, the contemplation, yeah, the contemplate. Yes, and they think, you know, uh, independently. These people they come and they learn about this religion, and when they see the contents of the religion. They are inspired. And I think that goes with the verses of the glorious Quran where it's constantly in various places it mentions Afala yes, yes, that's right. So does it not mean that Quran tells us and invites us to contemplate, contemplate to understand, to, 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 think, to ponder, to ponder upon, upon, reflect? Yes, it's a religion of reflection. Tadabbur, the religion of, of Tadabbur. Uh, Islam actually makes people to, th to reflect and think. People, those who are not with the religion, like I, I normally see that in ghafla, just, just leaving life. That's it. Jazakallah khair for that. Unfortunately, this we have come to the end of our tonight's program. There's much more that I wanted to discuss, but unfortunately, always the time is running against that. But inshallah. Can I just one mention one quick thing? Um, in th 30 seconds. 30 seconds, okay. Some may think, is there any specific ibadah in the night of Al Ma'raj? Well, the answer would be there is not any recommended ibadah for that night. The most important thing that we listen and we learn the story of Al Ma'raj and we implement the the belief, we uh, faith in Al-Ghaybiyat, uh, in, in the unseen matters. And also, as we have mentioned, the lessons that we learn, the difficulties, and then the honor of Rasulullah Sallallahu We can take many lessons from Al-Ma'raj. But, but as far as I know, there's no any specific ibadah for that night. But that doesn't mean we can stop doing the ibadah that are nafal there, where they be praying that, that nafal. General ibadah or, must continue. What about fasting on that day? Um, I haven't, as far as I, I, I haven't found anything. Okay, Allah but if Allah someone wants to Allah do it Allah just Allah. out of nafal. But general, general uh, fasting only. General okay, fasting. Fasting, inshallah. Thank you very much for tonight's discussion, inshallah. And uh, you've enlightened us, and I'm sure our viewers have enlightened with your knowledge and with your uh, wisdom Allah that you've shared. Allah with this, my dear viewers, we have come to the conclusion of our tonight's program. There are three important messages that I would like to share from our tonight's discussion. Indeed, it was our truly magnificent journey that no human being have ever experienced something beyond our imagination but we say Sami'na wa ata'na. the quran says rasulullah have said and we believe it we do not need a science to prove the word of god to be the truth the other thing that i wanted to share from our tonight today's discussion is there are three key messages that we have learned from isra al-mi'raj one is the ease after the hardship we know that after every hardship, as the Sheikh have mentioned, in al usri yusra, that after every hardship there is an ease. So, which means the higher the calamity, the higher the trials and tribulation and challenging that we face, the greater the reward. The second important fact that we learn from this Isra al Ma'raj it is the importance of prayer. As the Sheikh have rightly mentioned, that this is the only ibadah that was given directly to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam without any angel, without angel Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. This tells us how important it is for us to make sure that we do not abandon the salat, that we don't miss the salat, especially if we can, we should pray in jama'ah. And the third, the most important one is the iman. At the time of difficulty, at the time of challenging, when Islam was constantly, uh, was mocked, humiliated, Rasulullah was called by several names. Yet Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, uh, radiallahu anh, proved as a Siddiq, as, a, as, a, as the title of Sadiq, that he believed what the Rasulullah said. If I can relate it to our today's issue and generation, that whatever challenges and calamity that we face, if we can be steadfast, if we can be firm on our faith, regardless of whatever doubt that is in place by the media, prayer, or politician, or whoever it is, we should be steadfast and we should know that Islam is the true way of life. With this, I conclude my tonight's discussion and inshallah, we'll be back again next week with a new topic. Inshallah. Until then, do look after yourself. Wa matu fi qillah billah alihi tawakkaltu wa ilayhi yub. Subhanak Allahumma wa hamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa tawbi ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi taala wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Sheikh.